Hey guys, my name is Tom. This is my friend over here, Benko. And in this video, we are going to show you how to construct a coordinate system that is three dimensional and mark the vex vectors i, j, and k. And we will explain why you need those vectors. What purpose do they serve? So let's take a look. And I will be using this paper. There's a little grid on the right, but I will not use it. I'm going to draw the coordinate system by hand using a, a ruler. You should be following along and practicing, practicing, practicing. The correct kind of practice is what you need to be doing if you want to be good at anything. So he draws the axis. You draw an x-axis and I'm using a ruler to keep the edges very straight. Draw one this way. Make it look like a masterpiece so you can sell it for a million dollars. Who knows? Okay, there we are. So this is your X, this is your Y, and this is your Z. Okay? Now this is an example of a right-handed coordinate system, which means imagine our friend Pinko is right here at the origin, okay? The x-axis points along his right arm. So the way you're seeing it, you know, that is his right arm. And the y-axis points along his left arm. So if he's standing at the origin, we call this a right-handed coordinate system. So with that in place, the next move is to do this. Let's divide the axes into ones, or go by ones along each axis. And here, keep the spacing uniform and big. All we are doing is focusing only on I, J, and K. That's all we are doing. There's no need to rush. There we are. Okay, so we've divided the axes into small pieces, and now we will mark up I, J, and K. So I, I'll make the thick. I is the vector of unit length. Okay, so it's that arrow. Its length is 1 and it falls along the x-axis. J is the vector of length 1 that falls along the y-axis. And then K is the vector of length 1 that falls along the z-axis. So these are our unit vectors. Label it I with an arrow. Label it J with an arrow. And then label this one here as Z, well, along the Z, so it's K with an arrow. Okay, so these are our unit vectors. And now the question is, why, why, why? Why do we have them in the first place? The reason is that every other vector in our three-dimensional space can be expressed as a linear combination of these three mutually perpendicular unit vectors. So they are mutually perpendicular, which means the following. The angle between any two of them is 90 degrees. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay? Mutually perpendicular, 90 degrees for each angle. Okay? I, J, K, along Y, along X, along K. And now, let's take a look. We're going to do nothing but understand why we need them. Imagine you have the following vector in three dimensions. Okay, so imagine you have a vector that goes from the origin some point okay so let me estimate here roughly yeah 
It goes from the origin to that point there. Okay, that's our vector. That vector can be expressed as follows. You can take two eyes, two eyes this way, you see, two eyes. So mark another eye. Okay, you doing okay, man? Yep. Smile, it's good for you. See, he's happy, always, always happy. Now, if you could, if you had a ten million dollars and you could always be happy, would you pay ten million dollars for eternal happiness? All right, so you've got I and I. Now we move over to the right by about two J's. So that's one J and that's another J. Okay, so that's J. That's another J. And now let's mark up uh and the K is roughly this one right here, you see? So that looks more like half a K. Okay? So we've just expressed the following. This vector from the origin to that point is a linear combination of I's j's and k's. So let's write that vector. That vector v can be expressed as now we make it big and bold. Don't be afraid to make things big and easy to see. v equals how many i's? Count them. One, two. So it's two i's. How many j's? Count them. One, two. It's two j's. How many k's? About half a k, so add that in, that's your half a k. One half k. And what we have just done is expressed the vector v as a combination of the vectors i, j, and k, two i's, two J's and about, excuse me, about half a K. So that is the purpose of unit vectors. Any vector, not just this V, but the infinitely many vectors you can think of can be expressed as a linear combination of I's, J's, and K's, as I've shown you in this example. Okay. What if you had a vector say that goes this way and okay. I don't want to hit that so let's not make it the same color let's make it uh, ooh, neon green why not so it's easy to see you okay, say so you have a vector that goes this way okay. imagine this vector is in the zy plane how would you write that vector as a linear combination of i, j, and k? Well, take a look. Look down to the y-axis. That vector seems to be made of about how many j's? One, two, three, right? And then how many k's more or less make it up? Well, that's about one of them. That's about another one, and that's about a third one, okay, there you go, so our vector in this case consists of the following, this green vector that I've drawn in the yz plane can be written as v equals, count up the j's, one, two, three, count up the i's, there are no i's, so you would not include an i. All you have is one, two, three arrows along the y-axis, that means three i. Well, three j, I'm sorry. Okay, so three j's. 
and then you have one, two, three arrows along the z-axis, that means you have three k's. That's it, and there's no x component because this vector is located in the zy plane. But the key idea is it's expressible as a linear combination of i and k. So once again we've taken the unit vectors along each of the axes and we have used them as a way of describing another vector. And likewise with this, and this is the procedure in general. That's the purpose of a unit quantity in general. Okay? You use it as a kind of base unit and everything else is expressed in terms of that. As an even simpler example, if you have simply the number, you know, 2, it really means 2 times 1. The number 3 you can think of as 3 1's, right? The number 4 you can think of as 4 1's. The number 5 you can think of as 5 1's, you see? Same principle applies here. The only difference is these are vectors, which means besides having a magnitude, they also have a direction, as I've shown you here. And that is why we draw them as directed line segments, meaning arrows. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to smile. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day.